So today, we are visiting a new country for us here on the channel. And that country is not only beautiful, but has an extensive history and a vast amount of wildlife. And that is the country and collection of islands known as the Philippines. Now firstly, where does the Philippines get its name from? Well, this all comes from King Philip II of Spain, where Spanish explorer Ru Lopez de Villalobos named the collection of islands in the 1540s as Las Islas Filipinas. Now, let's not get this confused with Fernando Magellan, who first really discovered the Philippines for Spain. This is when he landed on Hamonan on March 16th of 1521, and at that point he claimed or founded the islands as part of Spain. And it wasn't until later that the archipelago got the whole name the Philippines. Now speaking of the archipelago of the Philippines, it comprises of 7,107 to approximately 7,600 islands. The reason for this inconsistency is sometimes there's high tides and small islands get swallowed up by the water. And surprisingly enough, this country has a land mass of about 300,000 kilometers squared, with a population of over 102 million 500,000. And because of that, it sits at the 12th most populous country with a growth rate of 2%, meaning it is one fast growing country. Now, the Philippines was the first South Asian country to gain independence after the Second World War. In the late 1800s, the Philippines got caught between a quarrel with the United States and Spain. And after the Spanish American War, which ended in 1898 with the signing of the Treaty of Paris, the Philippines had a problem being under the rule of the United States. And this resulted in a three-year war that went from 1899 to 1902. Now, strives for independence began in the 1900s, but in 1934, they introduced the Philippine Independence Act, which gave the Philippines a limited independence until the United States granted full independence. However, because of World War II, the Philippine independence was postponed until it became a free nation on July 4th of 1946. And this was all due to the Treaty of Manila. Now, during the Second World War, this was not just a dark time for other countries, but a dark time for the Philippines as well. As during this time, most of the islands were occupied by the Japanese. Now we all know of the terrible attack on Pearl Harbor, which happened on December 7th, 1942. But on December 8th, about 10 hours later, Manila was also surprise attacked by a Japanese land and air force. The large scale attack on Manila and Bataan resulted in General MacArthur being ordered to retreat from the Philippines, which made recent supplying and counter-attacking the Philippines impossible until he returned on October 20th, 1944. And unfortunately, by the time the war ended, the conflict had taken the lives of 527,000 people. Now let's jump out of the dark moments in the Philippine history and talk about some of the lighter and greater moments of the Philippines. The Philippines is a country that is rich with all sorts of different types of life. As a matter of fact, they say there is a large portion of life that they've never even discovered yet. But what makes the Philippines great is that it is the country with the highest rate of discovery for new life. For example, in July of 2006, they found 23 new species of mammal, and that was discovered on the island of Luzon. Now, an interesting thing about the Philippines is that 90% of its population is Christian, and 80% of them are identified as Roman Catholic. What I find also weird about that is that it is the only South Asian country to have a Catholic majority. And because of that, the Philippines holds the world's longest Christmas celebration. Now the reason for this is because it is very common to see people in September putting up decorations at their houses or in malls. Actually up here in North America we love the Christmas tree, but down there they prefer their Christmas parole which are lights created from bamboo and paper. And the holiday itself usually continues into January with the Feast of the Three Kings. Now speaking of malls, did you guys know that the Philippines has four of the world's top largest malls. Those malls are SM Mega Mall, SM Seaside City Cebu, SM the Mall of Asia, and the biggest one coming at third in the entire world, the SM North EDSA Mall, with over 5,100,000 square feet. Now one thing that's really interesting about the Philippines, it is the world's top supplier of nurses. That's right, 25% of all the nurses worldwide actually come from this country. And not only that, but 11% of its population are generally working all abroad 
which equals to almost 11 million people. Now another thing that makes the Philippines amazing is its amount of UNESCO World Heritage Sites. One of the most famous is the rice terraces of the Cordilleras, which date back to over 2,000 years ago. Now they were inducted into the UNESCO in 1995, and it was the first ever property in the heritage list as a cultural landscape. And speaking of heritage sites, you might be shocked to know that the Philippines has nine of them. Sites that range from churches to mountains, and let's not even consider the other 19 that are on the list for consideration. But one of the most special heritage sites is the Tabata Reef. The Tabata Reef is located in the Sulu Sea, and this was a site that was inscribed in 1993. It is home to no less than 600 species of fish, 350 coral, 11 shark species, 13 dolphin and whale species, and over 100 species of bird. And because of its diversity in life, it is one of the most protected sites in the entire world. A growing country with lots to offer from heritage sites on land to aquatic, the Philippines is a place that helps remind us that we are not the only creatures in the big picture we call life. The Philippines is one, if not the most beautiful archipelago throughout the world, home to a fun-loving and great people who look forward to the great days ahead. A distant place for some that has an assorted landscape filled with great beauty. But one thing we didn't mention is how the country is the second largest exporter of coconuts. If you're a coconut fan, you definitely want to go to the Philippines because the Philippines exports a lot of them. As a matter of fact, in 2009, they exported 19 million 500,000 tons of the fruit. And reports say that 25% of the cultivated land is dedicated to coconuts, which equals 3.6 million hectares, and anywhere between 25 to 33% of the population depend on coconut farming, sales, shipping, and distribution as their income. But that is not the only thing that the Philippines has exported. You could say that the Philippines theoretically exported the yo-yo. Although the yo-yo originally comes from either Chinese or Greek origins, the yo-yo became popular in the 19th century all because of Pedro Flores, who is an inventor who traveled to the United States in 1928 to start his yo-yo company. But the word yo-yo is said to come from the Filipino Ilocano word yo-yo, which means come back. And speaking about languages, let's actually talk about the languages of the Philippines. The Philippines has many native tongues. Currently, it has eight major native languages, which are Bacol, Cebuano, Hiligaynon, Ilocano, Kapampangan, Pangasinan, Tagalog, and Waray. Now, Tagalog and English are the two most popular languages throughout the country. But including these languages, minus English, they say there is anywhere between 120 to 175 native languages throughout the country. And unfortunately, four of them are no longer in use, but as for these languages, most of them are Malayo-Polynesian in descent, except for Shavakano, which has Creole origins. So let's move on and let's talk about volcanoes because the Philippines has quite a few of them. And one of the most active volcanoes is the volcano of Taal. Now ironically, it is on a island called Volcano Island. And although it is one of the smallest active volcanoes in the world, it is a special volcano because it is one of 17 volcanoes that is listed as a decade volcano. Now these volcanoes are watched closely by scientists throughout the world. The reason for this is because of their history, proximity to population, and many other features that scientists look for in order to prevent future catastrophes. And since 1572, Taal has had over 33 documented eruptions. But one of the most fascinating things about this volcano is not just its size and the amount of eruptions it's had, it's its crater lake, which may only be 20 meters deep and good for swimming, but it's cool because it's a lake within a lake within a lake and really quite bizarre to see. Now, considering we're talking about volcanoes, let's talk about Kamiguan Island. Although the island may only have 238 square kilometers, it has more volcanoes than cities, with a population of over 88,400 people. And the island itself has seven volcanoes and five towns, making it the island with the most amount of volcanoes per square kilometer. Unfortunately, none of them have blown except for Mount Hibok Hibok, which was in 1953. But one thing when it comes to the Philippines, have you ever heard of Jellyfish Lake? You probably have because it's world famous. 
It is a small lake on the island Aiel Malk that stretches over 14 acres and is 30 meters deep. And the reason it's called Jellyfish Lake is because it's home to a lot of jellyfish. Roughly 12 million jellyfish to be exact, with only two species known as the moon jellyfish and the golden jellyfish. Now the lake itself is a saltwater lake, and it is one of 50 lakes in Palau that is open to the public, which you can pay $100 to visit. However, scuba diving is totally prohibited because the bubbles actually do damage to the jellyfish. And although you're swimming with jellyfish, it is completely safe to snorkel. This is because although the lake may be connected to the ocean, for the past 12,000 years, it has been listed as a self-contained ecosystem where the jellyfish have had their sting become diluted. And when it comes to aquatic life, we gotta talk about the Philippines Trench. Located east off the island of Mindanao, it is the third deepest trench in the world, stretching a total of 1,320 kilometers long by 30 kilometers wide and 10,545 meters deep, beating the Kuril Kamchatka Trench by only 3 meters. And although it is listed as a subduction zone where tectonic plates are colliding into another, it has not caused any large earthquakes since the 1600s. Now although the land of the Philippines is fantastic, what about its people. Let's talk about Ferdinand Marcos, who was the first president elected of the Philippines. He ran from 1965 to 1986 with a corrupt dictatorship, but was the first and only person to be elected twice in the Philippines. However, during his second term, he declared martial law on September 21st, 1972, thus extending his limited two-term presidency. But however, martial law didn't stay in the Philippines forever. When it ended in the 1970s, the first Philippine parliamentary election was held on April 7, 1978, in which Ferdinand also won becoming the Prime Minister. However, no sooner after that, on June 6, 1981, the country held another presidential election. And guess what? That's right, he won the presidency for a third term. But without getting into too much detail about his presidency, one of the most interesting things about him, well, is his death. Because he died on September 28, 1989, however, in 1993, which was four years after his death, death, his body was returned to the Philippines and put on ice for preservation. And until 2016, they didn't know what to do with his body until there was a vote where 50% of the voters decided that they should bury his body. But many decades later, after his death, on November 18th, 2016, he was finally buried to rest at the Hero Cemetery of the Philippines. Now in the Philippines, you can't go far without seeing one of these vehicles. These are called jeepneys. They are the most popular method of transportation around the Philippines, but these vehicles came from the Willys Jeeps from the Second World War. At the end of the war, when the United States troops were leaving, they ended up abandoning or either selling the Jeeps to the locals of the country. And since then, it's become a symbol of their culture and community. As people decorate these things for their personal and public use, and as a matter of fact, the first jeepney was shown at the World's Fair in 1964 at the Philippine Exhibit. And throughout the years, they've made many modifications to the original Jeep, but if you still want to get one of the old Willys Jeep yourself, you can contact MD1 Enterprises in Manila who make an exact replica of the old 1940s Jeep. Now, the Philippines is also a country that's progressing to be a bigger country than it actually is. Is. And in 2014, it had some pretty interesting moments, as in April of that year, they legalized birth control for all of its people. But ironically enough, that same year in July, a baby girl was born, making her the 100th million Filipino. Her name is Jenna Lynn Centino, and she's one of 100 other babies born around the same time in the country who were given this historical title. And because of birth control and her birth, it marked a major change in the politics of the country. Although she was a celebration of life, she was also a celebration of choice, as the country for the last years had suffered a major population increase, with the health department hoping to reduce the population increase in order to reduce the poverty line and health for women giving birth. And with the introduction of birth control, it marked an important time when the Philippines fought against the Catholic ideals, fighting for pro-choice, allowing its citizens to make their own decisions in their life. And last but not least, probably one of the most amazing things about the country is the Philippines is the second largest geothermal producer in the world, but it is the largest consumer of energy from geothermal sources, as 17 to 18 percent of their power needs are covered by geothermal energy. And in total, they produce over 1,904 megawatts a year. But if you were to throw that in with the other renewable energies that the country has, renewable energy makes up 26 percent of the country's need. So there you have it, guys. It's amazing to talk about how 
the Philippines is a great country and how it's progressing for the future. A beautiful place in the world where one can explore the vast archipelago. The Philippines, it is home to many different species and many different ideas. Ideas that'll bring choice and life to its inhabitants. Located in Southeast Asia, the Republic of the Philippines comprises 7,107 islands. With more than 100 million people currently living in the Philippines, it's ranked as the 12th most populous country in the world. I'm going to be venturing into a little bit more of the darker side of the Philippines. Although it has a fast-growing economy, the Philippines still needs to address issues of poverty, unemployment, and poor infrastructure. And the first thing to look at is poverty. So despite the talk about economic growth, poverty rates have not changed significantly since the year 2006. As per the National Statistical Coordination Board, the NSCB, poverty rate of the population improved from 26.3% in 2009 to 25.2% in 2012. Poverty rate is very much linked to unemployment in the Philippines. On top of that, natural calamities continue to further push people below the poverty line. So poverty continues to be widespread in the country. Now, when it comes to unemployment, yes, that goes hand in hand with poverty. The Philippines economy largely depends on the remittance from the Filipinos living overseas. More than 10 million Filipinos are currently living in foreign countries. Basically only one fourth of the Filipinos that look for work are able to find jobs in the country and the rest of them find jobs overseas leave the labor force or end up becoming unemployed. Though the jobs are being generated, there's a need to generate jobs at a much faster rate. And this will allow them to bring down the unemployment rate. And like I just mentioned, in the Philippines, there's a heavy reliance on remittance payments. The Philippines was the third highest recipient of migrant remittance in the year 2013 after India and China. According to the Philippine Central Bank, remittance from overseas Filipino workers reached 26.9 billion US dollars in the year 2016. Now overseas Filipino workers are essential to the Philippines economy. Their efforts to give their families back home money to buy things that they need helps to increase household consumption throughout the economy. So the money that's given for the remittance goes towards food as well as essential items, creating more of domestic demand. While this is creating an inflow of money, it also weakens the quality of the labor force in the Philippines and hinders innovation. Okay, and next guys, I want to talk about the pollution in the Philippines. Philippines was ranked as the third worst polluter of the world's oceans following China and Indonesia, according to a report by Greenpeace in 2017. Greenpeace said that plastic waste was a serious problem in the Philippines, where people on limited income are pushed to buy cheap goods in small quantities. In the Philippines, products sold in single-use containers and pouches include instant coffee, shampoo, cooking oil, and many other things. So you see, these low-value disposables usually end up being littered everywhere. Greenpeace said that the Philippines contributed to 1.88 million tons of mismanaged plastic waste each year. And the final thing to touch on is the infrastructure problem in the Philippines. The infrastructure in the Philippines, transport, energy, and communication is one of the biggest challenges. The Philippines has been one of the fastest growing economies in Asia in recent years. A well-developed transportation and communication system is super needed and essential for economic activities. Now, the infrastructure problems in the Philippines are holding it back from reaching the next level, economically speaking, as well as improving its manufacturing base. Now, in the capital city of the Philippines, Manila, it often suffers from power failures as well as water shortages, as well as there's a very old telecommunications system there, and roads and bridges are constantly being broken down. So guys, those were just some issues and a little bit look into the dark side of the Philippines. The Philippines is an amazing and beautiful country, and I mean, if they can continue to stimulate their economy internally, the whole country can transform in the next 50 to 100 years like i mean completely different there's so much potential there the people are amazing and fantastic